Hi, thanks for joining me today on this free art lesson. I'm Wilson Bickford. I live in northern New York, and when I say northern, I'm talking way up north, almost near Canada. I'm not too far from the Canadian border. So I know snow, if I know anything at all. It's about snow. So today I'm going to show you how to do some believable snow textures. Um, I'm going to do a couple different ones on this same canvas just for demo purposes, but um, this one is covered with just a thin coat of white that I've applied previously to the cameras rolling. It is wet. This one has a thin coat of a bluish purpley gray that I made up using mostly white, a touch of ultramarine blue, a touch of Van Dyke brown, and a speck of red um, just to uh, kind of uh, give us a shadowed snow. So I'm going to do two different types of snow. Um, down here on the palette, you'll see that if I, I'm going to use a, a stiff bristle fan brush. This is a number four stiff hog bristle, white bristle. I'm going to take some white and a little bit of the ultramarine blue to mix up a shadow tone. Now what's going on here is this is actually kind of the highlight tone. I'm going to put shadows within that. Sometimes you have a more overcast day where you have more shadows than white and that's what this represents. This is going to be more of the shadows and I'm going to put the white highlights on. So I'm doing direct opposite. This is light. I'm going to add shadows. This is the shadows. I'm going to add light. So it's two different ways of doing it depending on what look you want. And I'm going to take ultramarine blue and white. And again, you could flavor that with just a speck of the red. A lot of times the uh, snow shadows are kind of almost leaning on a lavenderish tone. Notice how I'm matting the brush together. Quite a bit of paint, chiseling that brush right up. And be aware that snow will follow the lay of the land. So you can't just come in and put shapes randomly. You have to visualize the land underneath. So I kind of run the shadows accordingly with the shape of the land. So in my mind right now, I'm thinking that I've got some dished out land like in a meadow, it's kind of scooped out in the middle, a little bit of a low spot. And I'm just trying to indicate the undulating snow pattern or shadow patterns, little hills and gullies within that snow. So I'm leaving a lot of white behind. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to come back and I'm going to soften this a little bit. So I'm going to take a different brush. I could actually wipe this one. I'll just take a clean one, a clean fan brush. And the idea is I just want to soften it out a little bit. Now that doesn't look like a whole lot. That looks like a lot of uh, white snow where you've had a really bright day and not a lot of, more of a smoother uh, blanket of snow, not so many of the, the pockets. See, I can actually emphasize that, make some of those a little bigger. What really helps it look more like snow. Now you've got to put this within the context of a painting too. Obviously you'd have a tree line or something out here beyond the meadow. It doesn't make much sense there right now at this point. But uh, once you come back, I'm going to take a little bit of Van Dyke Brown and I'm going to spike up this fan brush. And just to give you the idea, if you put some of this grass that's peeking up through the snow, and obviously if the snow is deep enough you won't see that. But you put a few little touches of uh, snow in there and like I said if you get it within the context of a painting and realize that you're going to have a tree line out here in the distance like you're looking across a snowy meadow see how it makes more sense to you now now that I've put that in there but that's a real easy way to do snow if you want predominantly white snow and shadows very few shadows more of a highlight day I guess I would say now, down on the bottom, I've got the shadows already set in place, so it's going to give you a totally different look. You're going to have more shadows than white. Now, I've washed the fan brush out, and I'm going to take some titanium zinc white. This is Charbon paint that I'm using today, which is absolutely great paint. It's from France, very pigment rich, nice consistency, lovely paint to work with. I'm going to take this and chisel the brush up with a lot of white. It's the same idea. Let's see how I'm kind of scuffing and depositing the highlights. But it gives you a totally different feel. Now obviously if I just come in and just put white lines, they're too straight, too predictable, it actually might even look more like water. So I'm kind of scuffing it. And again, all the same rules apply that I talked about. Make sure you kind of put these in randomly. No rhyme or reason to them, they're just snow shadows. But see, I'm actually putting the white highlights. If you want to say that you've got a bigger hill, um, you can actually outline the hill like this and just put it in bigger, fade the bottom way down into the shadow so you get that little bit of a knoll setting right there. And then maybe perchance if there's grass or whatever peeking up through it, you pull a little bit of the grass through 
it just gives you a different mood, different time uh, of day, a little darker day. And like I said before, you're going to have some sort of a something going on back here in the North 40 with trees or whatever. But it kind of gives you a different uh, perspective on the snow, depending on the lighting conditions of that given day. So give this a shot. Like I said, uh, I know snow because I live there in northern New York and there's a lot of snow. So I get to look at this several months out of the year and I go snowshoeing. So give this a shot and see what you think. And don't forget to check out my website. It's wilsonbickford.com. I've got some DVDs available as well. So give it a shot, see what you think. Thanks for tuning in.